Hey everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com. It is after the close on Monday, April 28th, 2014. We're going to take a look at what happened today. <clears throat> Seeing this intraday volatility again, really kind of interesting. <clears throat> Before we take a look, though, I need to remind you that the uh, website and this video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site when the video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And please, make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's take a look. Starting out here on a 15-minute chart, <clears throat> this shows two of our <clears throat> um, important trend areas, one being the 1884 resistance right here, and the other is our region that is between 1840 and 1850, which is an area that has typically been support with the exception of uh, three days back in the middle of, uh, of April. And you can see that we also got over um, the 1884 mark for about uh, just a little bit more than two days in early April. Now, as you look at this and, you, and we consider this as a resistance line and this is a support region, um, could it be, and this is a rhetorical question, could it be that we bounded between these two areas then we got up out of here maybe a little prematurely or something I don't know then we came down hard and and sort of backed down underneath this um, support area the question is did we go underneath support for three days because we went above resistance for a little bit more than two days in other words did the market take on um, sellers above 1884 who regretted their decision and sold back uh, in, in, in the uh, 1820 to 1830 range? That's a possibility. Now, um, a couple things I want to point out with what took place today. The first one is, as we look at, uh, we, we pointed out this little wedge uh, yesterday. Let me go zoom in a little bit more. Uh, between these two lines right here, which I probably should make these, these light blue. They're not going to last long because this, this thing is now uh, no longer a factor. You can see that early on the wedge did what it what they tend to do and that is once you get above the top line you tend to go back to whatever level was in place prior to the formation of the wedge and we did that but what happened we got up to about 1877 roughly and and I think what happened was we we ran into gap resistance from the uh, gap down last Friday so we sold back down now, this line was not on the chart um, yes, uh, over the weekend. It is now because when we came down to that 1840 to 1850 range, we bounced just a little bit above 1850, 1850 and, and change. That just so happens to line up with these last two bottoms. So it, it looks like we're going back up now to test this line again um, and additionally we got up to about 1872 and change close to 1873 might have actually tagged 73 and what happens well we get turned back down well let's see if we got a trend line we can we can kind of take a look at well it's pretty close to that right there so guys <coughs> all of this to say as we have seen for the past one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now beginning the ninth week, we're essentially going sideways. Now, I, I, I was looking at this and 
and, and trying to decide if maybe we're making a top pattern. It, it would not be a, a head and shoulders top because we've got this dip down here, but it is possible that we may be forming a, a uh, what, what's known as a diamond up here. It, there's not quite enough things on the chart, however, to really make that a solid call. He, right now, if this were a diamond, then we would maybe say, here's, here's a top line. The problem with that is we've got this over here that's above it. And then we might have this as a corresponding top line. So there's the top of the diamond. But the bottom doesn't really line up too well either. So I'm not I'm not quite sure that, that this is a that this is a good call yet. I think we need to let things play out just a little bit more. See I mean that 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 just doesn't look like a a very convincing diamond top. But as we go forward, we may revisit that idea. Um, if we get some more data points on this chart. So once again, um, we had a day that, that had some volatility in it, which is kind of indicative of what we've been seeing for the past um, eight weeks or so, where we'll get up to 1884 and then we'll give up 40 something points, take, take them back again, give them up, take them back plus some, then give up all of that plus some, then take that back, then give it back. It's just it's just been uh, it's been really uh, a good bit of sloppiness in this area here. So I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on the chart, this line right here. Um, I'm not so concerned about that one right now. I'm going to erase this little uh, descending wedge. It's done its thing. So we are now looking at um, hopefully getting back over 1872 and tagging 1884 for another test. Really interesting. I can't remember the last time we were kind of range bound like this. It's been it's been some while. So guys, we'll certainly at some point we'll break out of this and when we do uh, we either go up to I think about somewhere in the 1950s or we come down and we and we test something around 1800 because that is about the height of this pattern i think we might have a little bit more headroom if we get above 1884 but uh, uh, again the signal that i think would tell us that this market is really ready and willing to move up will be the day we close over 1900 Let's zoom in to a three minute chart here, see if there's anything of interest. You know, I, I just think this trend line right here, and uh, the only other thing that I could point out is uh, just the fact that that um, we had this little steep descending uh, channel today that we see if we go on like a one minute chart. But you know, that's such a short lived thing. I mean, we could throw those lines up and just look at them. There's the uh, there's one line, and that's probably about as close as we're going to get to a support line. W what can I say? Here we are again. So hopefully, in the in the days ahead, we this uh, market will make up its mind whether it's ready to move above. 1900 or whether it feels it needs to sell down to about 1800 until then it looks like we're just range bound for a while but this is a line to maybe keep an eye on get over this line i think that would give us a signal that 1884 is going to be tested again now if you are a uh, daily candlestick um follower you could look at this and, and say that's a fairly bullish looking um development here but if we go back on the chart we can see we've we've had some of these little things that looked uh, where we had a narrow uh, uh, open to close 
This one looked like it might be kind of bullish, but you can see it didn't work out that way the next day. So that's why candlesticks, you always want to look for that second day confirmation. So let's see if we, if we, uh, if we have another positive day tomorrow. If so, that candlestick would actually uh, be confirmed as, as being bullish. Because we would also, at, at, at that point in time, we would also be above this little uh, resistance line that we see on, the, on a very short-term chart. So guys, once again, here we are. And <laughs> what can I say? Just be patient. Something's going to work out one way or the other eventually. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. And uh, we'll do this again tomorrow. Maybe we'll have something else to share. Take care.